So it's stimulus season, and while literally millions of people have not even received their first $1,200 stimulus check, as you're probably already aware, there is all sorts of commentary on new stimulus package programs. The number one being that $2,000 a month stimulus package that we just keep hearing so much about. I mean, heck, I did a piece on it early last week. I was one of the first people to talk about it. And now just the other day, there's another program that might be a contender to that $2,000 a month stimulus and may go in place. We'll see exactly what ends up getting you know, put out there, but it's this free rent or free mortgage program. And I talked a little bit about it in an update of mine. However, the more I look into it, the less I like this program. The, I just don't think it's gonna work. I don't think it's the program to choose between the two. So I'm gonna go into what exactly I don't like about it. There are a couple things I do like about it. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that $2,000 a month stimulus just to start things out. I think if it does end up going through, what's probably gonna happen is it's gonna be a watered down version of itself that actually ends up you know, turning into law. I believe that it's an example of what's called anchor setting in negotiation. I apologize for this, but I'm gonna go down a little bit of a Vsauce rabbit hole here. You know how in negotiations typically the result ends up being some kind of let's meet in the middle agreement. You know, one person's at $5, the other person's at $15, let's agree on $10. This is where anchor setting comes into play. Anchor setting is setting the bar either extremely high or extremely low so that all further negotiations are based off of that anchor that's set. And the effectiveness of anchoring can actually be scientifically proven, believe it or not. There's all sorts of research studies on it. One that I find the most interesting is a group of researchers asked participants what age Gandhi died. And they asked either, did he die before or after age nine or before or after age 140? And depending on which question people were prompted with, the average age that people guessed was either 50 years old or 67 years old. A difference of 17 years based just on how the question was framed. So you can see how this works in negotiation, it works with everything. It works even if people know what anchors are, it's so effective. So back to the stimulus. I think this is exactly what the representatives are doing. I think that they're setting this really high bar at $2,000 a month for every man, woman, and child. And then that way, with this crazy bar set, $1,000 a month or $1,500 a month doesn't seem nearly as crazy anymore, does it? I mean, we can see a perfect example of the reverse of this with the SBA where all small business owners were told, okay, every single small business, if you apply for the EIDL grant program, you're gonna get a $10,000 grant. And then what came out was, okay, it's actually just $1,000 per employee per business. Everyone was outraged. I mean, rightfully so, because we were promised X and then we got Y. But if the SBA and you know the CARES Act and everyone said from the get-go, you're gonna get $1,000 per employee through this grant, no one would have bat an eye. It wouldn't have been an issue. This is exactly what anchoring is. Obviously, that's in reverse, but you can see the powers at play, how angry that made people. Sorry for the tangent. I just think anchoring is super interesting. Let's get back into mortgage cancellation. I'm going to go over the exact details of how this proposed package would work. So Re Representative Omar from uh, Minnesota proposed the Rent and Mortgage Cancellation Act. If this act was approved, it would call for a nationwide cancellation of rents and home mortgage payments through the duration of the coronavirus pandemic or up to one year. The bill would include full rent payment forgiveness for your primary residence, full mortgage payment forgiveness for your primary residence, no accumulation of debt for renters or homeowners, no negative impact on their credit rating or rental history. It would establish a relief fund for landlords and mortgage holders to cover losses, and the federal government would create an affordable housing fund to finance the purchase of private rental properties by nonprofits, local and state governments, cooperatives, things like that. So the bill proposed would be effective March 13th, 2020, and would last for one year, supposedly. Renters and homeowners who made payments during April 2020 would be reimbursed for their payments, and the bill would only allow taxpayers to receive coverage on their primary residence. It would not cover second homes, vacation homes. If you have two homes, it, would, it wouldn't be covered, which I guess is understandable. Landlords and mortgage companies would be covered through a fund managed through the Department of Housing and Urban Development. 
the Department of Housing and Urban Development would create a relief fund for lenders and landlords to cover the lost rental and mortgage payments that they would have received. So that's the basics of it. It sounds okay on face value, you know, get my rent paid for, get my mortgage paid for. Hey, you know, I'll take what I can get. But the issue I'm having is when comparing it to a normal stimulus payment. Here's what I like about it. I like the idea of creating a fund to promote more affordable housing. I think that's super important. There's a lot of people who need lower rent payments, housing that they can actually afford right now, especially with how many people are losing their jobs and just don't have as much money coming in the door. I think that's great. I also think our heads are in the right place. People obviously, like I said, need help and rent is a huge expense. So I don't think there's any malice here, but the more I look at it, the more I just think, this is just, this ain't it, honey. So here's why I don't like it. It's an absolute logistical nightmare. Just take a look at how these stimuluses have been handled so far. Let's start with the SBA and how they handled the small business funding. There are 30 million small businesses and about 10% of which applied through either the EIDL grant program or the Paycheck Protection Program, about 3 million businesses. As of today, it's been more than 20 days since they promised you would receive funding within three days of applying. So we're looking at about seven times longer than what they promised, and 92% of applicants as of today have not received funding. And let's look at the stimulus checks. We're still dealing with countless glitches and millions of people who have not received payments. Now, I don't mean to talk down on these agencies' efforts because I think, I really do honestly think that they're doing absolutely everything they can, but the task at hand is just so monumental and then they make these promises and they can't keep them. It just makes everyone angry. So when I'm looking at this housing program, I'm seeing the absolute worst logistical nightmare yet. I mean, here's some statistics. There are over 125 million homes in the US, most of them with mortgage payments. Very few people have their houses paid off. There are millions of people with investment properties. There's, I mean, everyone basically knows someone who owns a rental home. There are millions of businesses that own real estate, either renting out to other businesses or renting it residentially. Every single one of these entities would need to apply at every level, both being renters, owners, or investors, Every single one would need different criteria for proof, and they would all need to hope to get their entire payments paid off and on a timely manner so that they don't default on, on their mortgage or go bankrupt before everything is processed. The system would force the economy to put so much work and attention into something that's actually not producing anything. That's never a good thing to have to work and not actually produce anything. That, that's terrible for the economy. All this energy could be put towards trying to do productive things in the economy. These people could all be working, trying to produce, trying to get more money in this time where we all you know, need more money coming in the door. And here's a simple scenario I thought up. Someone who just simply owns their home and then owns a rental home that they rent out to a family or something like that. So this person would have to request forgiveness on his home mortgage and file some paperwork. In turn, whoever holds his mortgage would have to request forgiveness or some form of funds from the Department of Housing and file more paperwork and hope to get funding. His residential renters would then have to request him for forgiveness, file some kind of paperwork. Then he would also have to file paperwork to the Department of Housing and then hope to receive funding. This is four transactions for one person who owns a single primary residence and one investment home. Now multiply this by literally millions of people who have investment properties. I mean, just thinking about the logistics is mind boggling. How they would ever process that, I have no clue. This is just one person with one rental home. Imagine just one, someone with five rental homes. I mean, there's people who have 50. I, you tell me how, how that would ever work out. Here's another issue that I'm seeing. People who don't have their names on leases or rental agreements would be out of luck. I mean, what exactly are you gonna do? So many roommate situations are some sort of like, hey, just throw in $600 for rent and you know, you're good. So without some kind of backdated contract or proof of rental, these people are either gonna be left in the dust or the housing department or whoever is organizing this is gonna have a system where they don't need a lease and then that opens the door for all kinds of fraud or someone just to say, hey, my payment is three times what it really is. 
And then we're just looking at more issues with the system. And also, rent isn't always the, the issue. Some people might have cheap, affordable rent, but they have a car payment that they're currently drowning in because they just lost their job, and that's what's actually killing them, not the rent payment, and this doesn't really help them. So I, these are just three situations I thought of in literally like 45 minutes of sitting down and thinking about this. I'm sure you guys can think of more potential issues with this. So when looking at the two possible stimulus packages, we either have one, a situation where every level of renter, homeowner, investor needs to file paperwork in some kind of new system that's not even built and have criteria that hasn't been fleshed out, submit paperwork that we don't know what it's gonna be, or the IRS can send us additional checks and give us the freedom to spend it where we need to spend it. And the IRS can use the system that they're already currently working on getting the kinks out of for this first check and then we can hope by the time they send out a second check because they've already sent out all these payments, they have, you know, they have it kind of together so it can be a little bit more streamlined than the first time. Again, these are all ifs. We don't know if this stimulus will go through. We don't know if there will be another stimulus. We don't know if there's gonna be three levels of stimuluses. It all depends on how long this crazy pandemic lasts. The longer it lasts, the higher the likelihood that there's gonna be an additional stimulus. I hope if it lasts a long time, there is something for the people in need, because obviously so many people are hurting right now. I don't know, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Can you think of any way that the rent program would be perhaps better than the stimulus program? I mean, I'm, I'm open to listening to ideas, or perhaps you have a different idea altogether on some kind of stimulus package that could work and be better than either of those. So I'm really curious, comment down below if you have any ideas or what exactly your opinions are. These are all up in the air. We're, you know, we're still figuring things out. This is an unprecedented event that we're going through. No one alive has ever dealt with anything like this. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a profitable day.